Thanks. Thank you, Ben. I'm going to call the Italian Village Commission to order for when the date is today, December, what is it? December 14th, 2021. Um, we will have our next business meeting on uh, Tuesday, December 28th, 2021 at 12 p.m. We're at 111 North Front Street, second floor room 204, and our next regular hearing will be on Tuesday, January 11th, 2022 at 4 p.m. here in the same room. Before we get going, let's swear in the staff. Can you raise your hand? State your name for the record. Jacqueline Lane, Assistant Historic Preservation Officer. Excellent. You brought solid truth in your testimony. The best we're voting in this country. I do. Excellent. We'll go and do the roll call of commissioners. Stephen Lane. Warren Pierre. Rachel Bill. Michael Smith. Michael Smith. Jason Sudi. Jason Sudi. David Cross. Excellent. Okay. Um, I think that we. I think we have pretty much a straightforward agenda today. At the end, I do want to update everybody on the uh, committee stuff. So I'll just let you know what's going on. Other than that, uh, do we have any, anything to, to do before we get into staff staff reports and staff approvals? Before we All right, sounds good. So let's um, have a motion on staff approvals. Those begin this time. I'm sorry, what's that? Meeting minutes. You know, I actually remember, but I was going to do all okay. in order. But I appreciate you because I forget it every single time. This time I know this. I'm like, I'm not going to forget those meeting minutes. Um, so, can we have a motion on staff approvals? So moved. Great. And they start on, I believe, page six, six of the agenda. Um, and do I have a second? Uh, I will go through now for extensions. 6163 East 4th Avenue. Or, uh, 139 East 1st. This is the one in Kilgore. That's close to you. I don't know. I don't know. I, it's close to being close to you. I'm not sure if it's close enough. It's up to you. Uh, 82 East Lincoln. 109 Summit, or 1099 Summit, and 194 East Third. Any abstentions out there? Okay, so now we have a couple of minutes from last meeting of November 9th. So made. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? That carries as well. Next. So we are moving forward into the agenda whenever you're ready, staff. First up on the agenda is continued applications. This is 287 East Springwood Avenue. The application was previously approved as IV-17-12-18 as 286 East 4th Avenue Rear at the time, with the COA expiring in January of 2019. The proposal is to renew the approval for construction of new two-story single-family home previously viewed as 286 East 4th Avenue. Really, the construction has been completed. The applicant is requesting an approval to renew the building permit to condition inspections. So, at the November uh, business meeting, the commission noted that they have additional questions about final construction details and will need to discuss with the applicant. The commission had questions about the stairs shown on page 12 of the packet, noting the stairs looked like they would not be covered and did not match what was approved, and that the applicant looked at the final siting possibly. And that's about the exposed flash being shown on page 23 of the packet. At the October business meeting, the commission noted that additional steps are present at the front door and is a change from the roof drawings, and that the steps will now likely require a railing to meet code, and that this modification should be included in the application. Uh, the commission at that time also noted the relationship between the rear window well and back steps seem precarious and may need a railing as well. So staff uh, recommends approval of application IV-21-10-009-287 East Greenwood Avenue with any clarifications to be submitted to staff for the approval prior to issuance of the certificate. And that is on the condition that any or all changes for the improved drawings are addressed. And the basis for the staff recommendation is that the work is generally consistent with the standards for new construction and the Italian village guidelines. Right, great. Uh, we were remiss in getting our applicant up here. Uh, we have an applicant for 287. Yes. Yeah. Come up to the table here. Hey, Mr. Martin. Will you please raise your right hand and state your name for the record? 
John Martinez. And you probably saw the truth in the testimony of the veteran that I just saw in the captain. Yes. Great. Uh, so you've heard the staff report. Turn it over to you for any comments, and then we'll have some questions. Sure. So, yeah, we, we had this approved while well back in an expire. So we requested a um, renewal so we can get our final inspections. Um, we are going to be putting handrails in the front, the front of the house. It doesn't require uh, handrails in, on the side door. I should say where the sliding door goes. Um, anything under 36 inches, they, they told us that we don't need to put a handrail, but we are going to put in the front steps anyway, so we can make it uniformly with the rest of the houses in the area. But those are the only two things that we have to do. Okay, let's uh, go around and ask some questions. Anybody want to start on this one? Oh, we just passed this. What we pulled out with the clear. Can you talk about what's happening next one? Um, Sorry, one more. In the virtual here again. What is happening? Wait, 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 that's it. That's it. Down a little bit. It's all the rusted, it appears to be a rusting material. But the garage door uh, at the railing where you put the black railing, then what is all the material that's that's a hard story? It is so that's a hardy plank that we have there to mm -hmm. talk about. Yeah, I think it's, it's gonna be a little tough to get them to zoom in exactly. It's at the top of this picture, and there's like a railing up there with air again. Just a little, little yeah. further on. That's it. So we can zoom in. What are those three yeah. layers of material that, that what it looks like it's rusting or it, it isn't? Oh no, that's not. That's uh, that's the floor tile that you see. That kind of reddish thing. You see that? Yeah. That what you're asking about? Well, that's one of them. And then what's okay. the white thing below? And clearly the okay. metal thing is tipped up. It. It's not captured. It doesn't look finished. It's, it's yeah, the that, that picture was taken before we. Interesting, but that's a rubber membrane. You know, that's a, a one by to hold the rubber membrane, and it was covered with party. And then you got the gutter going over. Then uh, again, to the picture that was to the side of this was it's a black situation. You've got the material curling up. You had on the motion to include that these details are not. There it is, we do. So that's the same process as the back. There's a rubber membrane there, it's a flat roof. Okay. And then let's go to the front door steps because that is an issue. Why did you cheat on the? Why didn't you take the step all the way across the land instead of that? So when the builder had done the foundation, they had already had done the, yeah, the porch, I should say. So once every, all the concrete was poured, then we saw that we had to add another step and be able to make it to get into the house. Fellow well, commissioners, would you say this top two steps should be taken outside edge to edge so that it's a full rather than this ridiculous? That's yeah. not a detail. That That's fine. Can we, we can extend so that to the edge. I think you should take both the top two and the bottom one and make them with That's it. That's fine. Shouldn't be a problem. Further thoughts, David? What is your plan to finish the side yard that right now was just like a, an alleyway, a little place? So it's in between the houses, as a matter of fact, that my landscape already gave me pictures of that. So we put gravel uh, in between the two houses to match the rear two houses. So the rear two houses and the front two houses where we're at is going to have the same type of gravel all the way to the back. And then we have some stepping stones in between them so they can walk on the stepping stone and not on the gravel. I think it's like a decorative gravel. Yes, it is a decorative gravel. That be a landscape plan that was approved, or was there was too little? So that, that that was what was approved for the rear, and so we use the same material for the front. I don't think we would have approved that as a landscape plan had it come before. No. So. 
for me to provide a landscape plan with something more significant than too little ridiculously underscaled plant material. So we need a, a detail of the material, the gravel we use in between the two houses. Should be a complete submittal, yes. So where is that idea on this? Where is that section? Actual site plan with the gravel. Do you think it's up this side or this side? So. So, so what is approved? Well, what do you guys do with one to the two houses? Because I don't have any guidelines to go through and to find out exactly what you guys want me to put there. Um, Steph, is there is there an approved landscape plan? This was approved. I've seen it on the things I see now. So it'd be something you'd have to check the hard copies to see if there's any additional approvals for landscaping because I'm not recalling just off the top of my head any specific landscaping. It doesn't mean there are none. It could be in large copy files. Okay, well, maybe we'll have to make sure that this top to see if there's an approval. Because there are other houses in the area that have the same graph. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, I don't know if they're a like to like comparison. Uh, I don't know what every other house is. Right. Let's get those things. But I, I, I'm comfortable. I am too, but I think with motion ought to read that it needs to be submitted because you know, certainly is at a complete waste of play for the problem. Okay, uh, let's keep swinging around. Book. I need a comment that the when David Commissioner Cook was asking about the roof detail or the what looked like it was rusting. He said that was an old photograph and that has been um, right, remedied. It obviously, doesn't look like that anymore. So you would have done yourself a big favor by bringing more current photographs for the whole thing. Frankly, okay, um, stay on that page. Excuse me, just a minute. You always a standard to have some sort of a good snap layup or some light over a garage for safety and security. That did we approve, or did the applicant ever submit the lighting? In one of the photographs, there's a wire hanging out of the um, uh, like the block. It's at the sides. At the side, right? There are like pictures that are shown um, in the drawings. Well, six. Nothing about the photographs and the drawings match. So back back to all my nasty comments. But um, the front stairs are just horrible. That's fine. But those can get fixed. That's no the problem. There's. Do you need a light fixture at the front door? There, there is one. Like I said, these pictures. Well, yeah, we're, let's let's get usually just so you know, usually we all give comments on that. It's kind of loose, but now it seems like getting a little too dialogue. Just yeah. give us a second, sure. let us get around, and we'll, we'll get back in. Um, the relationship I wonder what you're doing with the with the um, uh, window well at the basement window as it relates to the steps coming down from the back. It seems a little precarious, um, especially. You know, on a Saturday night after a couple, couple grown up bevies, um, I'd like to know if you're planning to do anything there to prevent a fall. And um, I guess are the um, are the circular stairs something that we typically would have approved? I guess it's a neighbor. That's a well, there are some um, limited examples of it. So that's not a first. All right. Do you have another one before he comes or again? So can you that's that window well right there? Yeah, yeah, can you respond to that window well question? Okay. So yes, the window well has a lid. It's a, a heavy duty lid, so it can open and close as needed. So no one would fall into the well. Um, the stairs if we need to require to put in rails, we would if we need to. Um, they are two stairs, only 16 inches from the floor to the 
to the to the sliding door. I don't think you need it. Yeah. I don't know about that one either. I just my focus is on the front. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll just echo the um, the, the newer um, photos would help a lot. But um, I do see, I know in the business meeting you brought up about the downspot locations. Um, I see them in the elevations. So it just would be helpful to see those in the finished um, boats as well. But other than that, I agree with the other commissioners about the stairs. So staff, let's look at you just a minute and say, if the applicant brought in photos that address these issues that we've raised and there has been a correction to them. They do submit you a landscape plan for the front yard. They do share a replacement of stairs that then you would feel comfortable in going ahead and doing this rather than coming back to it. Or given that there are so many question marks, you would prefer to say, let's have material submitted. So this commission has the appropriate things for either something. I think with the amount of items, especially the stair modification, says it won't match exactly the lead uh, a modification between what it is now and what was approved. It would be feel most comfortable for it coming back to the commission. Uh, and then the other part, I want to see uh, a rail too, or just what the railing might look like, which um, so I think the staff approved, but that might be could be rolls with all the other items. That's also seems a lot uh, I appreciate the comment that you brought up. Um, I, I understand the frustration you guys trying to get moved in, but we can't approve anything. And what we see in the photos doesn't match the drawings and in other old photos, but we just, at the risk of repeating everyone else, it, I think it needs to be said that we need new photos. That's what we can do anything. But my, my question is, you know, we had your Proved at one point, and unfortunately, because of many reasons, we couldn't move forward and get it finished on time. We've done the, the other two projects in there in, in the same area. We haven't had any issues, and um, if we if we didn't have any pictures, and, or if we had any starting, we wouldn't have these questions, right? Well, I think the main thing is that what we're seeing in the pictures doesn't seem to match the plans that were approved. Right. So if you had built everything exactly like the plans, then you wouldn't even be. But the only thing that you're seeing different is the front porch. Well, well it's all the missing, uh, like just to be particular, the goose next constant that were approved on those drawings, we don't even see any like plugs for those in the content she just passed the photo. So I mean, we, if we can't see where things are on the drawings, if we can't, <laughs> and we can't approve that. No, but we, we do have all the electrical exactly like the plane has it. We don't see that. We just see because the stairs. That's that's I'm not going to argue with you. I think this, we I will have a motion to continue. Um, it, as long as you know, can have us call the question, it doesn't seem very that's fair. Right. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think that, that just to explain uh, one more time, you know, for anybody who's actually somehow sitting at home watching this, which is some scintillating TV. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, you know, if you have put a plan and then you continue and get those get those built in the time frame with the plans intact, yeah, you're right, it goes straight through the process. This is because of the delay and the fact that you notice, particularly right at the top, which is a huge deal because that's what everybody looks at. Um, it being different. So that's really what, what the issue is here. So so I'll take a picture. I think staff you have a list of items, I believe that you yes. have. Yes, I'll send um, the summary and comments too as well. So you can have them. Good. Um, so we're gonna move to to continue this, that's okay with you. Sure. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Uh, David, is that the motion? No. Yeah. Go ahead and second. Second. And all in favor of continuing? Thank you. Opposed? Extensions? Okay. Thank you. And we'll see you at the next. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was rude. Okay, that's not so okay. It's we all we get it. We're just trying to get the music. Thank okay. you. Uh, next one. Um, one one six three six. We just wanted to just um second here. Um, staff, this just to 
to clarify, um, I know we have some questions about the, the types of fencing from last time. Can you yes. clarify that a little bit your staff report? Yeah, yeah. I can you know, review the staff report too. Yeah, if you could just go through that, just reiterate what that was. Just sure. Sure. Oh, we have seasons. Um, will you please, are you enhancing the name for the record? Can you also choose the testimony the best way to vote you this evening? Yes. Okay, great. So let's stay on the staff report and over there. Okay. Board 1163 St. Avenue. Um, the code violation has been issued for work to be completed. The applicant is proposing now to install or replace the installed four foot high wood fence with wood picket fencing for the submitted materials. The new fencing to be 138 feet long and three feet high. At the November business meeting, the commission noted that flat top or picket style board on board fencing would be okay. Some commissioners felt that the dog eared style would be overly suburban for front fencing. The commission noted that the fencing board should be close together or closer together than the example the photo show on page two. The commission asked if, posts, if the posts proposed are similar to the example shown on page two or the fen fencing would be a consistent line. So there were some questions of how the fencing would appear both with the top portion style, um, how close they are together, as well if it's a consistent pickets or if there's going to be a post in the middle like shown in that example photo. And as previously at the November 9th meeting, the commission had noted that uh, the aluminum fencing that was previously approved or previously proposed, the commission has not typically approved aluminum fencing as it has not held up well over time. Uh, at that time, the commission had requested a uh, scale site plan and noted that the site is different than what the commission usually sees with the double length exposure rather than the locations just at the front of the house. And then the commission would be okay with aluminum or wood fencing at the side elevations or the side portions of the property, uh, noting that any six foot privacy fences should be behind the first window at the side elevation in front of the home. Uh, the applicant should return the details, which they have done. So the staff recommendation is approval of application IV 21 11 1163 Say Avenue. With any clarifications to be submitted to staff for reviewing approval prior to issuance of a certificate. And that staff recommendation is based on that the work is generally consistent with the standards for site improvements. Okay, sounds good. Um, what do you have to add? Then we'll have some questions. Um, the space in between the pickets. So I have um, two inches in between. Okay. Uh, the posts would be present as a picture. Like in that in that particular example photo. Yes. Um, and just so we understand how you say you're now making the entire thing. The entire front and the side. Yes. Yeah, so the whole the well everything you're replacing is going to be. Yep. And is it all going to be at the same height or does it get taller than? Um, it will all be the same height on the front and the side and the back fence we're not touching. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Uh, questions that I want. So do we have the width between the pickets? I think you did. You just said two inches. Two inches. Just standard. Well, I mean, I think it looks like the pickets are maybe. What do you think? Three and a half inches. The fourth is the fourth. Oh, four. Okay. Uh, something like that. Um. I mean, I don't think I really have anything to, to add. Yeah, I think the um, facing the board size and the picket in the front yard, like we talked about, is appropriate with the, uh, it not being too shut off, like in kind of what was there, it's a suburban backyard fence. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. Um, um, I don't have any questions. I just have, a, I just don't think wood is appropriate front of this house on the sides. I do, but not, not in the front. So. I just want to confirm two things. The height of the fence will be three feet. Is that correct? Not four. Have you designated a finish for this? I 
don't see it right here. I'm looking for it. Can you tell me? Do you plan to paint it? Do you plan to stain it? I don't have any plans for any finish on it at this point. No, that concerns me that if we, this one does have a stain on it. We do typically request like a stain or paint finish. So. I, and then when we go to the original picture with the, the first example, that just looks totally unfinished and raw, like creating material rather than a half picture. Of the Oops, I'm looking for Jason's screen. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the first one in So for my approval, to get my vote for it, yeah. Yes, yeah, Steph, uh, do you have a recommended connection or is it, you know, in different options? I think they probably have their two examples in the village. One is painted and the other is stained. Um, yes, and then I know the commission had mentioned the post. Uh, I think it's shown on page two of the packet. I just want to make sure it's comfortable to post the design. Yes, those are four inches. It's noted in the specifications. So yeah, that's fine. Or I just mean that I guess it looks like a post coming above the pickets. Just the corner. Um, I mean, I don't care, but staff, you have a different recommendation. It's just something I have been seeing before. Um, so I'm you know, the commission and then, you know, if this was something that has come up. Well, I guess at what frequency would the post be? Like every certain number of pickets or every certain specific distance? I don't really know that I can get you that information. Yeah, I mean, I think from my perspective, it would be, you know, staff, if you have examples that where you prefer to see lower or differently kept, I don't care about it. Sean, is okay. Other thoughts on here? Um, indication of what what species is being used. At least cedar. They just didn't check any of that. So it's... And is there is there a gate of some sort? There would be one one gate that. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I guess the only thing then um, would be if you could submit any. Need or whatever to staff for what you get back to them. So, and then they, they should go. I think our applicant has been very willing to work with us and has clarified some things. So, other than maybe holding it up, we could say if those are presented to staff, we could go ahead with it. Good thing. Uh, is that your motion? I, I just have a quick question before you do. Sure, sure. Um, I was just going to ask if the gate will match similar to how it's shown as existing, just the same style of fencing, or if the gate will look any different or have any different style. It will match. Okay, okay so we would like to make a motion to approve this application ending the applicant submitting a, I'm going to recommend staining that painting is going to be higher maintenance and have to up more often the staining of the age and we're just trying to take down that little part yellow color that looks like finished totally okay. so i'm going to say stained and you would uh, provide staff that you would provide them the hardware detail and let's just for the records uh clarify which material we're doing which wasn't checked on this application okay. so that we have a complete packet again that the history is okay, right second Okay, uh, I'll do the rolls to know there's some uh, dissension on this one. Uh, David? Okay, yes. Lauren? Yes. Paige? Yes. Brooke? No. And then I'll vote yes. So, okay, you're all set just with the staff and uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so let's go on to the next. First step. First step, 47 to so uh, I'll ask to get notes to the full level this morning. Um, will you please raise your right hand to change the record? Yes. Yeah. 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 Y
Yes, Kareem Cameron. Now you talked about police investability uh, in the testimony. Did I speak to you? Yes, I did. Okay, number 4753 East First Avenue. This is a continued application. Uh, the proposal is to construct a two unit townhouse building at the rear 47 and 51 East First Avenue with a height to be 31 feet to the peak of the highest ridge. The existing structures on East First Avenue will remain. The lot split in combination from 47 and 53 East First Avenue for their proposed design was recommended at the November 2021 IMC hearing. Two dwelling units are to have two bedrooms and two bathrooms, each are to have a two private car garage, access from a proposed private drive, as well as four surface parking spaces. There are also a number of variances proposed, including for site A, for site B, and for site C. And I will list those all out there because there's quite a bit of, there have been some updates in the business meeting, and those are shown on the infrared on the staff reports, and the updates are um, the ones shown on the agenda are just the updated version. Yep. Uh, so, oh, I guess I should mention at the November business meeting, the commission had noted that more detailing had been added on top of the brick, and at the end, panel looked cleaner, and the design looked very close to being finalized. The commission had asked about the downspouting gutters and wanted to make sure that that was addressed to avoid white or aluminum lines coming down the building. Uh, the commission noted the applicant should come back to a future meeting with the formalized landscaping plan, and the commission requested a detail in the corner to show how the corners would be addressed. So in response to the business meeting feedback, the applicant has submitted an updated rendering showing the corner detail and light fixtures, and notes the downspouts and gutters will be hidden in the center wall between the units. And let's see. Oh, so finally, staff recommends approval of application IV-21-09-020, 4753 East First Avenue, with any clarifications to be submitted to staff to review and approval prior to issue of the certificate. And that recommendation is based on that the proposal generally meets the standards for the construction. So over to you, sir. Great. Yeah, thank you for the introduction, Jacqueline. Um, again, we've uh, have absorbed your comments to the best of our ability. Um, we appreciate your patience on this side. It is a difficult one. Um, but uh, with your feedback, we, we believe it's turned out quite nicely. Uh, just to reiterate some key changes. Um, from the last meeting, we did indeed replace the hardy tour with uh, an, an aluminum based siding. Uh, established more of a front door presence for, for your recommendations. Um, and in terms of the north elevation, um, added a, a projected sort of brick feature. Um, previously, it was, it was recommended to be, or it was more of a flat brick feature. So. Um, and we also are added the articulated cap on the brick as well. So that's all I have to add. Start, start somewhere. Okay. Uh, she's got a couple of comments on this. Over. Talk about the architecture when she did it first. I appreciate the note about the um, hidden downspouts. I think that was a conversation at the business meeting. Nice detail to incorporate and the um, Kind of a nice clean metal coping that slides you are showing um, with that excellent detail. Um, I don't recall any large questions that we have. I know I've gone around on this one a couple of times, but I guess it's something. Um, I appreciate all your will listen to so many of our comments because I know it's been a long time. Um, the one, and I think it's fine. The one thing I did, did notice, though, is that the north elevation rendering shows the canopy or little eyebrow over the entrances, but I don't see that in the in the uh, drawing of the north elevation. Am, am I missing that somehow? Not reading the elevation correctly. Uh, Take your so point. The little canopies over the entry doors, but they not showing up in the drawing. The bottom thing, they, they, they should expand over the rim, which does not show it. Right. But it would be more preferable, correct? I. Probably did have some scale. Yes. Yes, I would say so. 
I like what I, I frankly I like what you're doing on the rendering. So if you could pick that up, it gives it a little more presence and uh, focus on the entry doors. Sure. That's the only comment. Other than that, I think it's fine. And again, um, to submit the landscape plan at some point when you're ready. Okay. Good morning. Um, I mean, again, echoing what everyone else says, I appreciate that you clearly listen to our comments every time I come back with a noticeably different um, deliverable. And I'll let you always include like a previous one so you can compare. Uh, I just want to also say that the landscape plan is going to be really important because I am moving to approve this based on kind of the landscaping you're presenting. So I, I don't want that to change too much. Obviously that's not the exact, but yeah. Great, uh, we're gonna miss you. No, I've seen you know that we see you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, Tom, anyone for the web flow. What Laura and I have said is we do appreciate the willingness. This has been a long, long journey, but I think this is a good project and you will have my vote. We will need to note that the north elevation does need to be corrected to be more uh, perfect to the rendering, but specifically focused on the canopies over the front. So then you, staff, will take a look at the landscape plan and also the street number identification would be something that should be in there. Since the doors don't face what the alley, which will be the street, how will the numbers or how will the two units be identified or something? So, uh, nice work, it's particularly uh, the rest of the site plan and how that's going to be used to be a lot. We had a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say disagreement, but we didn't have a lot of alignment here. So. We appreciate you bearing with that and figure out what I think is the best solution we could have. So, with that, will anyone make a motion? All right. To move applicant, approve application ID 2109-2. Pending the comments, so uh, should we? Okay. Right, second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? And abstentions. Thank you, Mr. Carries. Thank you for your patience on this. How are you doing on your variance? Um, we will need to uh, need to Yes, excellent question. It's our next thing, Mr. Right. <laughs> okay, so there's a whole slate of variances on here, but they look to me like the usual things you need if you're going to put a project like this and kind of are cool that they're not previously designed to accommodate this urban type of style. So I don't have any problem with them. Um, does anyone have any questions looking through that from that list? It's funny that I'm asking this question after all these years, but when we jump all we do, we don't approve it, we just make a recommendation. That's okay. but somewhere in is that done actually a letter or yes. Um, I, we'll I feel passionate and I'm asking question. please in that letter of recommendation, could there be just a couple of simple sentences that says Part of the reason the commission is so in favor is the fact that we didn't lose parking on the original property and we haven't provided the requirement for the new development without adding more load to First Avenue out on the street or taking it away or all the rest of it. So. Yes, but can you put in both the, the regular certificate of copy as that letter? Right. And we could just make that because I think we worked really hard on it. Great. Okay, with that, will anyone uh, submit a motion to recommend these variances to the BZA? Sure. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And abstentions. Okay, so thank you very much. Okay, so now we are moving to two, three, and two. I like that look around the room to see if anybody was going to come up or done. <laughs> um, will you please write your right hand and uh, state your name for the record? Uh, Kara Farrell. And you promise to tell the truth the best of your ability in your testimony to this? I certainly do. Excellent. Okay, for 233 East Greenwood Avenue.
the architecture was approved at the November 2021 IDC hearing. So coming before us today are variances, including one to earth height districts to increase building height, um, variance to increase permitted lot coverage, to permit a two dwelling unit, two dwelling unit building without street frontage, to reduce total side yard, uh, to reduce um, south side yard, and reduce the rear yard. So the November uh, 30th, 2021 business meeting, the commission noted they would like the applicant to attend the hearing for final questions, such as clarifying where the trash cans will be located. Uh, so generally staff recommends approval of or recommendation of application IV-21-12-006 233 East Rand Avenue with any clarifications to be submitted to staff prior to approval. And that is based on that the application generally is consistent with the standards for new construction. Great. Okay, over to you. Uh, I don't have anything to add other than uh, okay. it's a residential project um, being just that it's two units, so it would um, it would use the existing 300 gallon trash receptacles that are currently in the town. That are currently where? Uh, they're located in the alley, I think, um, at least on Google Street View, they're, um, they're sitting in front of the vacant parcel that's between this project and my other project. <laughs> Uh, to the, it would be to the west of this side. So it's sitting right out on green. We're really going to do projects and we're talking trash cans in the Toronto. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, those are city located. Uh, trash receptacles. We say the individual owners have to keep a trash can in their garage and make it mobile and take it out. I, mean, I, I just don't see the logic of just adding trash I mean, dumps. Yeah. I mean, there is this is kind of ongoing issue is that we've got alleys that are now between the street. Not that this is exactly the situation, but yeah, we have to figure out what the what that switch over point is and when the city will. Allow individual rolling because then the problem is you end up with like three in a row like this, and that becomes an item double the block area. You know, there's maybe one or big and smelly items to dump there. Um, what individuals to keep it rolling. I don't know if we can solve it on this one in particular, but I think it is an issue that we start to we need to systematize it somewhat because it, it's, it's, it's a bit crazy. The one thing that makes it a little less concerned is I don't think it's significantly altering the way that functions. But my concern, as you said, is as things continue to develop here, what happens when all of a sudden someone builds something and they certainly don't want three of them in front of the house? So then somebody's going to show them some of this. So that was a, a lot of. No, 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 Corner at an acute angle. I mean, if if the city did result in adding a 300 gallon container um, because of the increase, or even because of the increase of these two units and a potential single family next to it, uh, you know, there would be room uh, theoretically on a street in front of ours. I mean, obviously, that's not ideal for anybody to have those large ones there, but. Um, I think it's accepting your last statement. It is a good idea. What we're doing is potentially adding another one. I think that is I think the applicant needs to address the issue related to this. Yeah. I mean, I think one thing we need to do, which I think would be very helpful for the next 
next year um, is if we could a dialogue. It can be here at this meeting or it could be separately with uh, the department that, that determines all these things that are being placed. Um, because I know for a fact there are many places where people have pushed them to another location because it's really gross to have it right next to something that has been developed after it's been there. So they just sort of end up as leftover. Um, the other thing is, even after all these years, I don't understand what the break point is between, hey, you just use a 300 gallon and you get your own trash can. I, I, I have no idea what dictates that. Yeah. I know of right now I have a trash can, but for 20 years before that, I had to walk down the so I don't know. I honestly don't know the answer. I will say, again, the fact that this is only two units, I don't think it's a make it or break it for this issue, but I think it's a much bigger issue than this yeah. in, in the neighborhood that we have to figure out. So. And, and particularly when it comes to, to redevelopment of alleys, and we're starting to see front door addresses on alleys, and I talked to um, different folks in the city about this from the zoning perspective. At this point, we have no provision to change them. So you could have an alley that could suddenly have 10 front doors and still have a bunch of gross 300 gallons of garbage can. Clearly, it's not long. Anyway, that being said, um, who else has comments on I do. Yes. Uh, I just, you know, I think there's you as a designer, we as design professionals, should actually think about what we're doing with situations like this. We make a spot for a car. We could certainly make a spot for a trash can, either in the garage or somewhere else that's designated as that, just as a best practice to try to instill better design from all the design professionals who are um, building in an urban area. I mean, it, and you get a garage. So why don't you get a spot for a trash can? So I, I think, I mean, this is a, a fairly broad conversation, but as a, I mean, this is a private residential um, development with two, uh, with two dwelling units. So yes, we could, we could make the um, agreement to have this particular, these two units trash cans stored in the garage and then wheel them out on trash day. However, the, uh, the, the vehicles that service the 300 gallon um, trash cans are different from the ones that go up and down my alley in Clintonville and pick up the 50 gallon trash cans. So, sure. I mean, so forcing these two units to get um, commercial trash pickup when everyone else on the um, on the alley is using the 300 gallon city ones is right. I, I'm not I'm not suggesting that you're forcing anybody to do anything. I'm suggesting that as a design professional in your future projects that maybe you would encourage the um, owners to think about um, what they're doing with their recycling and trash and how they're handling it. And maybe that will spur a change for the whole system. And sure. we may not need as many 300 gallon. Um, that's all. I right. mean, you know, who wants a who wants a no, I, 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 yeah. full of 300 gallon trash cans? Sure. Yeah. That's all. I understand. Greenwald does not have uh, sidewalks, correct? Um, <laughs> the yeah. the staff comment that we got. For this particular site, is that they they want us to put a um, sidewalk on uh, Greenwood, so the north side. Yeah, you know we've had different approaches that and we've added sort of like a hot approach to that as we went along. I mean, I think that would be helpful because as you see, even further down, you get to sort of situation where it's still sort of integrated into the lake front. So it's like Punta Alley, where we did sort of the sidewalks to make it a walkable, at least one side is walkable. But my point would be, if we look at the north corner of this project, is there a way that a load of low screen wall would be could be integrated in your uh, design to conceal two trash cans and be one for each 
unit and we start this process, you've got, you've got a wall that is basically just a wall. How about a lower one that would conceal? So, so again, I, I think it, I mean, and we can make the request of the, of the, to the Columbus Department of Refuse to pick up the 50 gallon containers at this site. I think their response is going to say, I think the response is going to be, we service 300 gallon containers. Um, you can request a 300 gallon container for your parcel or to be placed, you know, but if, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? It's like we can't. I hear just, it, but I'm, yeah. I'm not buying it. You're in. This is what a two hundred and fifty, three hundred thousand dollar unit. What do you think these are going to go for? A lot. Yeah, yeah. Then you got three big green tubs sitting there. I don't right. think this is our responsibility. This preservation area. This is this is new architecture. The white dump trash dump. Right. Yeah. Maybe it's a battle for the new year. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I can, I can certainly commit to, you know, making the making the phone calls and and providing a, a report of what the response is. Yeah, I, mean, I think this, this this one photo. This is again a broader conversation. That can you turn it around? Just like there is a photo. It's in it's in the packet. It's on page seven of the packet. We pop it up. Yep. Yep. We can do in the bottom photo. Um, Oh, okay. yeah, top, yeah. top, top left. Uh, it's really it's it's kind of a perfect summation of what this issue is. And then there was a scattering hundred gallon units or no units or none of them that got tubs when this was basically a, a dilapidated, mostly vacant street with the backside of you know, some some industrial slash warehousing buildings. Then as these were filled in, some new ish looking. Ground tubs began getting built along that, that street, quote unquote, from the street, which is really sort of functions as an hour before. And now they're all squished down to one parcel because that's the only one I'm going to do any development on. Um, and that's just not a really that somebody's going to develop it. And then we're going to really break up your point about connecting the side. This side, yeah, for sure. It is yeah. one on the other. And so I think this is just something we have to talk about with the Department of Refuse and say, look, we basically don't understand the process by which a street that at one point had a gallon tub, but I can't say tubs, because it wasn't functioning as a regular street, is now going to be functioning as something different. So, how do we transition into something different? Yeah, I, I don't think this is, I don't think this is necessarily a church problem right in this spot. I think it is a problem. You know what's interesting though? Look at the building, the new building. Right. There's their trash container. Yeah, because there's a the wall, screen wall around the piece. Bring that on over. Which is a commercial building or a commercial scale building. Even though it's Okay, well, let's not flog this any longer. I mean, okay. the applicant is saying they're willing to make an investigation into yeah. it. They're hearing that it's an issue in front of the commissioner's office panel for final approval. Let's switch gears just a minute. What's the lighting situation over your garage doors? Are you going to use the balcony as a, as a down light type thing? Or yes. are you going to have some architectural lighting on? The... No, the, the overhang by the light. Okay. I would be interested in seeing how that's detailed the next time. And uh, if you could talk about that, uh, because that alleyway, we know what, what's happening. Fourth is like High Street. Let's get the security lighting along those alleyways and so across streets. Um, I don't know if you made all the way around. No, I mean, I didn't. Okay, yeah. Um, I think that the uh, changing gears a little bit in the future with the variances that are on the table tonight, I think a significant decrease in side yards. I'm very interested to see higher landscaping plans that would work. With those, especially looking at bird's eye view and how much that isn't, you know, how the final space is, and uh, just all the trees that you have proposed, even work there and what what that's going to look like, and if they can stay. But so, well, that influence. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, did, did I miss anything else? I'm sorry, I just got so wet. No, okay. So it sounds like. Um, Landscape plan, uh, including yard, sidewalk, or whatever that side of it is. 
sidewalk to continue to go on the street, north side. North side. Um, and then, you know, as, as far as I think the, the garbage issue, I mean, I just have to take what, what um, the applicant's saying as far as willingness to do that research in order to try and convert those areas. But we're requesting to have to be have some sort of interface, whether again, that could be a group of us that is most interested in it, it could be kind of separately, where they can come in and talk through the meeting, whatever your restriction is. We can also turn it into it so you can get some more clarification. Trash issue, and it's just not this project, right? Many other examples right. here where we fill it in every single square inch of property. Okay. okay, so with that, uh, we're looking for a recommendation on these variances, correct? Right. Okay, so do we have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, all in favor? I opposed. Abstentions. Okay, well, thanks for helping us think through these issues. My pleasure. I'm, I'm glad to once again be here. <laughs> and we'll see you in the new year. Okay, so we are on to number five. Um, 30, uh, North Heights. Okay, so are we please raise your right hand and say your name for the record. Mike Sabora. Well, we promised all the truth. It's not this week. I did. I feel like the only people that are coming to the meetings today are people that have been coming to the meetings off and on for at least. It's glad to be back. You've got <laughs> even the next couple of days. Yeah. So that's, we have a minimum of a long time. This is like, it's like for the holidays, I think. Okay. <laughs> So, um, Sam, will you inform us on this one? Yes, this is for 1030 North High Street. Uh, the violation has been issued for work already completed. The applicant is requesting approval for the late night slice trailer, chain stands, fountain signage, and speakers for the submitted photos. At the November 30th, 2021 business meeting, the commission asked to clarify if the boxes on the shipping container structure are TVs. Uh, I noted that TVs and speakers are not typically found to be appropriate in the outdoor areas. With the last discussion, the commission noted that they brought up the possibility of projecting a TV on the wall. The commission asked staff to include previous meeting materials and comments from the hearing in August uh, regarding the conceptual application for a TV stand handling. The uh, commission noted that there are a lot of smaller things going on that can be discussed at the hearing to clarify. So, um, the current uh, site building appears does appear to be on Google Street View, dated from November 2020 and later. And the previous shipping container appears on Google Street View for November 2019 and prior. So, staff recommends continuing application ID 21 12 007. Shall the applicant time to revise the application to the short north design guidelines and address any outstanding code violations? That recommendation is based on the short work design guidelines uh, for signage, page 3.37, including the general guidelines, as well as the site work and landscaping for page 3.42, also for just general guidelines for that, as well as these 3116.13 standard for site improvements, uh, specifically under A, C, uh, and D. Sir? Yeah, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, this project is, uh, as you guys probably know, it's been very reactive. Um, and I, I think I, I agree that it's uh, time for us to be a little proactive with this and come together with a full plan for this. Yeah. It seems every year we just have a couple of things that just need either improved or fixed or upgraded, but you know, we've never had a real true site plan for this patio. And I, I think it's time to have a complete site plan for the place and just a presented in a proper way as opposed to being very reactive about things. So can you just talk to us a little bit about what what are the elements that you guys are really trying to achieve out here? What are the, the main things? Because it just seems like there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, right. yeah. I agree. Um, so, you know, for our last meeting, there were some talks about maybe adding the uh, some like parapets to the trailer to kind of cover up those AC units. So we did that. Those were some TV boxes. There's not TVs in those currently. They're really brought out for special events, game days, stuff like that, but they're not out there on a, a basis. Uh, signage is one of those things that you know, we kind of did ourselves. So there was not a permit for that just because I wasn't aware that needed them at the time. But uh, again, being a little reactive on that. 
Um, a couple other things like some of those chains and uh, the statue, I just wasn't aware that you know those elements needed to you know have a COA attached to them. So you know, really just pulling all this stuff together is is in our best interest. Yeah. So um, I'll let everybody else kind of talk through. I think just from a big picture standpoint, um, I feel like you um, have both the disadvantage and disadvantage of being the first person to basically have any of this stuff on the short arm. <laughs> so as we all know, there was really no outdoor in, interbuilding spaces at all. Um, you know, we commend you for that. You opened the first window, you know, operation people go down there, the first outdoor thing, activating the street. Certainly appreciate all of that. Um, you know, really was a transformational thing for the important portion of the street. And it was really just having to take it at the time. A bunch of other stuff that wasn't was going to. So um, and that other good stuff on the other end, just the jab that was something good about that. So um, the the good fortunate thing is you inspire that whole end of the street now to be very successful. And um, you know, all of these outdoor spaces have now sort of brought them, you know, have, have been coming up in in quality. Um, and we saw, even though it was a, quite a lot of time, eventually even the standard spaces really they put a huge investment in there. Well, they put a huge investment. And they, they radically upgraded the gravel model. Um, and so I guess what we're hoping is not to, at least what I'm hoping, is not to quell the quirky, unusual nature of this cool space that started as this ad hoc, weird, empty space between two buildings with a hole in the wall. Uh, but to, like you said, systematize it just so we know what to expect. We can improve it. It can be what it needs to be going forward. So it can be weird and unusual and fun, just not. That does not feel quite as strong together and also feel like a situation where we have to keep having you come in here every mm -hmm. couple of months and we have to figure this stuff out over right. again. So that's the goal for me in this process. But let me go like kind of roll through everybody and see what the particular uh, hopes and concerns are. So uh, Rick, do you want to start? I know you have some thoughts on that. Well, yeah, I agree with um, everything uh, Commissioner Sudi has said, but I also am looking at you as a pioneer in the in the, the short north and you've been there a long enough time that you should know that there are guidelines and that I think you are pretty successful. So if you don't know what the guidelines are, maybe you can hire a consultant who can walk you through this. Because you you're wasting money at this point because you keep doing things that are not right. You probably have to tear them out or you know, come and wiggle out of this stuff. So I think you'd be doing yourself a favor and also be elevating. Uh, I agree with all the perkiness, but, you know, elevate it. Elevate your um, sophistication as, you know, as a good neighbor in the in the short north. And um, it'd be wonderful. Thank you, I agree, actually. <laughs> I think probably one of the bigger concerns when it is just kind of like you said, a reactive decision is also like the longevity of what you're putting out there. So like you can see this like TV boxes are kind of already starting to get worn or like damaged from just weather and all that good stuff. Um, so just like a like you to reiterate what you said, a plan to kind of move forward for a long term kind of investment in your space um, tends to make sense. I do appreciate the TVs are not like uh, street facing, but I would also recommend that you do have um, one of the like deepest patio spaces in this area and um, potentially like pushing those more towards back and away from the pedestrian street. Um, could be more appropriate in this area as the like, TVs are a bit of a stickier subject in this area. Um, but yeah, I think those are also just really some of the main things of how can we ensure this is maintained and looks good for a while. Which we... uh, okay. I agree with everything that Commissioner Sudi said. Um, 
Congratulations on all the press you're getting about being Mr. Keats of Columbus, Ohio, but that puts a new burden on you. You've been here enough times to know you just don't go do something and then wait to see if shit hits the fan. That boo sign absolutely has to go down, go away. It's inappropriate. We have worked years and years not to allow billboards and dump liquor and beer and stuff shown. It is our neighborhood. It is our residential area. And we've got enough problem on High Street right now in the last two or three years that it's become more and more serious trash and all the other stuff, I mean, paper trash and beer can trash. And users. But that doesn't help by putting booze as is that your message? Come on. You're letting us down. Change it. Come back with a real plan. Okay. Uh any other thoughts? Any other? No, I, I agree. Uh, you know it's it's time we have a consistent and uh proactive plan for this space and we've just uh, kind of been piecing stuff together for long enough. So um, I agree with the comments of the group. Uh, so then you're okay with us continuing this and then you know, with, uh, with the more with the strategy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, probably by uh, maybe we set some parameters around that within um, you know, 60 to uh, 60 to 90. Yeah, so like basically, I think the way this works is we can continue it only a few times in front of it until it gets to the end of the final edition. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure what the extent for code enforcement, but. Of course, we'll kind of the you know the deadline. We'll certainly want to see that the applicant is working with staff in the commission. Um, so if we have an idea of when the application will be submitted, that'll be helpful as well. Yeah, I think if like if you could commit to like a February application, I think that keeps you in the time frame. Yeah, yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so with that, um, we'll just uh, should, should I guess we'll continue in February. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, can I have a motion to continue this application to February? Second. Excellent. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed? And abstentions. Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, we're great. Okay, next up, um, another stranger to the board. Another two strangers to the board. Okay, uh, whenever you gentlemen get settled, raise your right hands and if you will state your names for the record. Excuse me. Can you promise to tell the, uh, the truth in your testimony of the best you ability to speak? Over to staff. Okay, for 804, 806 Summit Street, the proposal is to construct a two story addition to the rear existing home. The roofing would be asphalt shingles to match the existing shingles. Exterior siding would be horizontal cement board painted to match the siding of the existing historic home. And windows would be aluminum clad from the approved windows list. As mentioned that this is a conceptual application. So at the November 30th business meeting, the commission noted that the massing of the proposed addition appears to be appropriate. Uh, the commission asked what the existing siding is on the historic home, whether historic siding is present beneath, and asked about the two color uh, painted bands on the existing siding. Some commissioners asked that the applicant consider an alternative window style for the addition to be more in keeping with the rest of the home. For the staff recommendation, uh, the commission should offer to sign feedback that can be utilized by the applicant uh, to refine the proposal for review at a future Italian Village Commission meeting. So, no action is required today since this is a conceptual application. And the basis for the staff recommendation is the 3116.12 standards for the construction. So, uh, basically, we have an owner who's been here about 30 years, and we're just doing a very simple one room addition on the back of this. Um, so it, it's, uh, he actually came in today and he said instead of using a horizontal siding, he'd like to use a board and batten siding, which I we actually agree with because I think it would look better um, contrasting with what's there now. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just very simple. Um, and a lot of he's, he, it's a duplex, and so he lives on the second floor, um, and so more glass on that floor. Uh, he has a tenant on the first floor, which uh, he wants more privacy down there. Which is why the windows are a little bit um, higher up on the wall than on that board. <clears throat> and then eventually he wants to take the siding, the, the final siding off the house, and start restoring that and painting the rest of the house as well. He has taken the vine off of the front porch, and it's a tongue group, D group siding up there. So that's the assumption of what is on the rest of the house. 
So we're we'll, we'll looking at good shape anyway. Yeah, we're encouraging you to take off all that stuffing. So yeah, gotcha. Okay. Um, I'm in favor of the plan. The only concern I have or question would it be possible to maybe reduce the massing of the second floor window on the elevation? It just seems like you've got skylights, you've got windows on the side. It just seems like from neighbors looking over fence lines and things, that's a lot of glass in there. Is that essential or could it be? With your creativity and your sensitivity always to proportion and scale, could that be broken down into two, four windows rather than one massive wall of glass? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. We could look at that same moment. It just seems like it's way more than is needed. Yeah, the, the intent is that he does want a sunroom, but I think we can kind of articulate that a little bit uh, differently to give it some character, especially if we're going out a little board and back. So. Through that would be definitely true. That's my only comment. Um, I'm pretty okay with this. I do think the I agree with David's comments, uh, but I think the bottom, the first floor windows are weird. Um, and um, you know, I think there's a, there are ways to create privacy without uh, dealing with it architecturally. And um, so my my hope would be that um, you could make uh, those windows a more appropriate size. Yeah, we'll go back. We'll, we'll talk to the owner about that again soon. Yeah, I guess um, I'm a big fan. You don't have to talk about the board batten. Um, now there's not as much pressure to try to match the um, existing um, of the house and everything. So I think that's a great plan. And then um, as far as the windows kind of in the rear on the, um, I guess it's the south elevation. I guess since it is um, very clearly going to be like a new addition to the older home, uh, I'm not so opposed to the different scale of those. Um, kind of shrinking those up if the first floor is requiring that. Let's see. Um, but yeah, I agree that the overall um, mass of that east side uh, elevation might be a bit much, especially with neighbors. Um, I'm not opposed to the, to the first floor windows, not for them either. <laughs> Uh, especially if we're looking at the plan to the sunroom, it kind of seems contradictive to have not great windows. And then I guess like privacy for who that's going into their backyard, that seems like a very private space. Um, so I mean, there could be arguments for having larger windows, but at the same time, it's, it's a rear. So it's not something that it's not a hill to die on. And I have anything else to add. Um, yeah, when it comes with the design, um, Obviously, the more we can encourage the removal of the vinyl, and happier we are. Um, the you know the original argument I was having for how it was going to interface is a little bit um, moved because I'm bored and I can easily imagine how it interface. If you're when it gets out of the board map, then it's just gonna be back to kind of the first line, quickly and straight line. So we get it. Um so yeah, I mean I think that's the only thing from my perspective is obviously the the more you know, more quickly, you can commit to changing that to happier. I think we would all be, but in the meantime, uh, makes sense to move on. So, that's great. Yeah, okay. Our office is right across the street, so it, we would strongly encourage you. Yeah, yeah. Area. Um, anything else you need from us today on this conceptual? No, that's all. That'd be great. Yeah. Great. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Um, Say we have the last actual application. Can you see that? Okay. Familiar face. And you will each please raise your right hand and state your name for the record. Philip Aaron. Dustin Allcamp. And you promise to let you in your testimony the best your ability is. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Over the staff. Okay, from 729 17 Stream.
The proposal is to construct two additions to the rear of the existing duplex at the northwest corner of Hamlet Street and Cedar Alley. A two story addition would be added to replace the attached shed located on the southwest corner of Unit 729. And a single story addition is to wrap around the west elevation. Another two story addition will infill the northwest corner of Unit 731. The additions would be wood frame clad and center dishes left and vertical board at that siding. The roofs would be low slope roofs clad in single ply membrane roofing and would be below the height of the historic roofs. So, at the November 30th business meeting, the Commission asked for a larger floor plan to better understand how the site will work and what will happen to the basement scuttle doors. The Commission requested additional photos of the property, including a photo from the back of the property line. And the Commission noted the water table in the historic building appears to be stone, and we want to talk about the base of the new addition. The applicant has submitted uh, additional materials in response to business needed feedback. So, Stank would note that the historic Italian style home is located at the corner of Hamlet Street and Cedar Alley, with the west or rear elevation of the home facing Cedar Alley. And that Italian style buildings are characterized by asymmetrical floor plans and projected bays as part of the shape and design of the home. But the asymmetry reflects the romantic style trends of the mid to late 19th century, in which the Italian style experienced popularity. The asymmetrical projections of the Hamlet Street home defines the passing of the building. And is a key character defining feature of the building design. That the infilling is currently proposed to remove the majority of the projections and asymmetry of the building, altering the Italian design of the entire west elevation, and removing eight historic window and door openings uh, with stone sill ceilings. The proposed new roofing is currently shown in the drawing. It also appears to extrude the new historic roof line. So the staff recommendation. This is a conceptual application, so the commissioners should offer design feedback that can be utilized by the applicant for the refinement proposal for review at a future Italian Village Commission meeting, so no action is required. The step recommendation uh, basis is on the 3116.11 standards for alteration, specifically numbers 1, 2, 5, and 10, as well as the 3116.12 standards for new construction. Um, so, you know, as in the description is, we, you know, this is a uh, building that uh, is zero lot lined against Cedar Alley on the south side. Uh, the proposal is to kind of create um, some amenity space within the unit that is not there in the standpoint of storage, laundry, and actually security in question with regards to this, the uh, existing exterior scuttles. Um, if you go to the plan, you know, those scuttles will be internalized with uh, alternating, uh, alternating uh, tread stairways uh, that are accessed through a floor hatch um, to create security and to actually help with conditioning of the units themselves. Um, the three uh, 731 unit have a first floor uh, powder room added uh, as an amenity to it along with it in laundry with the second floor uh, well, you know, the closet storage area or off the uh, master suite. Uh, and in similar in the seven I'm sorry, that was a 729 unit, this which is on the south side. The 731 unit uh, has it is an infill piece um, in the in the uh, offset uh, of the unit that would have you know this the scuttle access or the crawl space access to the mechanical spaces plus a laundry room and on the second floor would have you know, uh, closet storage space to the master suite. The intent on understanding that uh, the asymmetry of these units is important to the historical character. The uh, specific additions to respect that are offset from the face of the building, so they're, they're not really flush. They, but the offset is, is minimal. It's, it's about four inches to you know. I like the fact that there is an existing, you know, asymmetric buildings and try to respect that from both the material standpoint and the setback standpoint to, to address 
um, that historic condition. Um, and you know, the material change, I think, helps um, accentuate that asymmetry. And you know, additions of this type are not uncommon on these uh, types of structures with either porch structures or you know, one story you know, kitchen additions on the back. Um, that are prevalent throughout the neighborhood on some of the single family homes that have some configuration. Um, the, and so the materials chosen, um, the, you know, the additions themselves are asymmetric, and as, asymmetric, uh, asymmetrical uh, from unit to unit uh, that it creates its own kind of dynamic within those spaces. Now, you know, this is, uh, they're very small in impact um, so we're not taking up any additional rear yard space and so from the standpoint of block coverage um, it's a minimal impact but it does provide a, you know, a great deal of amenity and security uh, for the, for the uh, owner uh, in, in these units and actually uh, Dustin does live in one of the units he lives in uh, the 729 unit and the other unit is uh, a unit that he sent um, so, um, with regards to the roof, uh, because of the offsets, we wanted to you know, hold the existing or the, the new additions down below the, the eave line and to go in with flat roofs below that so that the, the additions actually step down below the um, eave line and do not affect the upper roof at all. You know, with the uh, South Union addition, it is, you know, it does wrap around the West facade, which creates, you know, the ability to, again, create some visual interest and variety with regards to the siding and the scale of those pieces um, with an introduction of horizontal siding versus a vertical door on the other pieces, on the, on the second story piece. The windows in the units are scaled in proportion to match the uh, existing windows in the building um, to carry those rhythms and, and proportions and scales uh, through the addition. Uh, in regards to the foundation, the, there was uh, questions. Um, yes, the, the existing foundation is a rubble stone foundation. Uh, our intent would be that the foundation would be a smooth cast in place concrete foundation to create you know, kind of a visual contrast to the existing that it would be clearly a new piece. Okay, well, let's uh, see what the thoughts are right here and we can uh, continue the discussion. Let's start with uh, one of our architects here, Amy Diaz thoughts on this one. Yeah. I think that the kind of creative infill is very helpful for keeping that rear yard space that you kind of refer to. Um, I think that's a nice open space. Then also keeping those additions um, tighter to the buildings with those lot lines kind of um, doesn't elongate those like long side yards any more than it needs to, I guess. Um, if you were to add them to the back of these buildings and take away some of that rear space. Um, I really appreciate all the material um, items you touched on changing um, to create that contrast with the existing building. Um, and I think that the, the, the recess for the additions is also um, a great call, again, providing that um, contrast to the Historic building. Um, I don't think if I had. Yeah. Thanks for um, also taking all the feedback from the business meeting and addressing it for us, like the foundation as well, what that will be. Um, it is the. Um, I like how the. Uh, I think it's appropriate how the. Trim of the windows, you're kind of uh, 
And then the king thing, it's, the thing existing lentil. But I'll be curious to see like that um, specific detail for those additional goes. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I don't have much more to add. I think uh, Paige hit it pretty well. And to cover my comments as well. I appreciate that I'm, there's not really anywhere you could go, but what I do appreciate is the fact that the primary elevation of the house hasn't been affected by the additions. So um, I thought that you could, you know, push it further um, than that anyway, but that maintains the integrity of the original house and that front elevation. So I'll be interested um, and look forward to seeing how this develops. I have a lot of heartburn about losing seven historic windows. Just, I feel like any historic home, that's like, that's the thing that you want to keep. So, it, that's going to be a lot to reconcile. Um, but I'm, I'm very interested to see what you're going to use to replace them, I guess, and like the pieces that are still going to be visible. And then just really briefly, and this might take like an actual architect to tell me if I'm overthinking this, but a lot of these corners you're infilling have downspouts. And I see where a few of them have carried over, but just there's a lot of nooks and crannies on that roof, so sure we're in trouble of where all the runoff is going. Okay. We'll go back to the elevator and you said the elevator. Okay. Bill, thank you for the uh, orientation you gave us. And I wrote in the holiday season, and I made another book that this is close, but I thought I heard you say that this. Roof line would tuck under an existing building. And to me, it looks like it's exactly in the same line. And could it be lowered so that the original structure stays and it does drop down a little bit low? Maybe I'm not understanding that. You could scroll just a little bit where we see this appendage that breaks the, the line. I guess that's all sitting on the property line, correct? Correct. And that's just a shadow right now. I guess the one comment, uh, if we could keep the stone on the Cedar Alley side of the one unit, but the ones that essentially no one else can see but the occupants of it could be maybe the concrete. Uh, material. I just think it sounds really abrupt to go from that stone. We maybe just as a suggestion or a possibility. I, mean, I, I, just, I understand what you're saying. You know, we, we, because, because you're zero lot line, there's no landscaping possibility. Right. It's, it's a pretty jarring change. Um, I, I think we can look at what when you think of the church directly across the street, the cathedral, and there's a lot of stone base there, and then the rest of that block has these same Italian aid houses that fortunately you're not destroying those in any way or modifying them. It just seems as you come down the alley, maybe keep the same material on the alley side would be just a thought I heard. We can I think we can try to address that in some shape or form and, and take and when you say concrete, concrete, hopefully you're not talking about the one that looks like stamped bricks. No, 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 no. It, it, it would it would be smooth. You know, I know you guys don't like the stamp bricks, you know, but yeah, yeah. try to stay away from it as much as possible. And, and that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll just have to see that because I do appreciate what you're saying about having it really distinguish a different element than it is in addition. Mm -hmm. so maybe it's just a matter of coloring. Because yeah, that's technically the preservation guidelines. Is when right. you add an addition, you change the materials to purposely right. indicate that it's so. I think this is appropriate. There's lots of examples of yep. for that party board views to a brick house. Yep. Sorry. Um, as far as we just had this like early. As far as the back porch steps, are you planning on just like replacing that entirely? Or are you 
kind of merge it into the existing where you're bringing the back elevation. Those porches will, will be torn out and there'll be a new porch, there'll be a new porch that's a okay. combined porch put in. It'll be similar in kind of concept of what's there. Okay. Just to see the details of how that flush it out. Yeah. And then uh just because I couldn't see. Um it'd be, it'd be kind of cool if it was like cut stone or something like that being with like you know, Large block stone steps, or we'll have to see what that is. But this is just a cast concrete. Uh, sure, and then also um, just kind of based on the materials you have in the back, you have some like, like brick patio area, and then kind of like a dirt pile. So I'm wondering if you're going to continue to finish that as a part of this project, or is that going to like move the bricks that will be displaced by the new building, kind of to cover that, or is that? Well, I guess we haven't really gotten into the idea of you know, what's exactly happening back there. You know, I, I think into that would be the H, uh, the air conditioning units. Also, I assume we don't want window air conditioners any longer. No, it, the air the the, the uh, outdoor uh, condensers are shown on plan. They're in the corners. Right. You know, we're going to be relocating the electric. We're going to be relocating the mechanical. You know, the you know obviously the fence along Cedar Alley is going to have to be really, there's going to be some additional items that we'll have to deal with with this addition we just haven't dealt with them but we're we're trying to get in kind of gauge from you all if this is a direction that we can even go in uh, and then you know obviously you know as we work through the details with you all we'll, we'll, you know, this will get more refined. From Dustin, us. you sat through the last comment a couple back. Uh, where are your trash cans? <laughs> and how will we address those or please plan that for it or when you come back please uh, address well i can answer it now if you want sure uh, i'm just curious i forget I it's the, that whole cedar alley mm -hmm. uh so there's one big trash can of 300 gallons that services that whole area. it's on the other side the church actually owns an empty lot across the alley from it mm -hmm. and it's at the corner of Yep, that and I know where you are. Gosh. Okay. Um, any other comments from questions? Any other questions you have for us? I don't think so. Did you have any comments? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I found this drag with Lauren on my first slide. I know it's tough to throw up those windows, and I do think that the, the approach you're taking is, um, is being sensitive to the, the interesting characteristics of the building. Um, I also, as much as I did learn a new word last time, which is, is it scuffle, is that right? <laughs> scuffle. 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 Okay, see, I did learn it. S E T T I L E scuffle. So the scuffle, now I hopefully learned. Um, <laughs> well, I think those are like incredibly cool and romantic. I also would think it would be like hugely disadvantageous to live in a building where you have to go outside and flip them open to go to the basement. So I understand. You do? So I, I do understand the practicality of what you're doing. I think it's a relatively, it's, a, it's you know, compared to the size of the building, it's a, it's a small amount of, of, of real space you're adding, but I can see where it's going to be a greatly added to the windows function. And that's really what our job is, is to take this, you know, preserve the historic characteristics, but allow these buildings to thrive for the next you know, hundred years. That's what we're trying to do. So there are details we'll work out, but, um, and, you know, what it the challenges are. So I think, I, I mean, from my perspective, it sounds very positive up here. I don't think there's any reason we wouldn't continue down the road you're going just with the considerations that we brought up today. Okay. I appreciate your time. Is there anything else up here? No? Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. See you back in the new year. Yeah, right. absolutely. Well, okay, for me, if you just indulge me for like two minutes or so, I feel like I've done my duty here in front of you, and maybe it'll actually be. Um, so we have, um, for those of you who don't know, there is a thing, um, which is a special printing area for short life. And um, we have actually a very well run and robust approach now to things like permit parking and the way that parking meter fees are set and all this kind of stuff, which we did not have for many, many years. We're starting out how there's a whole department at the city that does that. As part of that, um, there's a special parking area made for the shore north, in part because we have a fee in the north that we collect if people can't um, meet their parking requirements, and that's taken it out of our hands, which is really nice because we used to have to argue about parking variances all the time. We don't do that anymore. Now they either need them or they pay. 
That's just the way it goes. And one of the essences of this payment is that it goes into the special parking district, uh, district along with a bunch of other things that allow us to then use those in what we think are more progressive ways to deal with parking issues than just having parking spaces and ideally come up with better ideas than that. So uh, just to update you, I mean, we've probably quite a bit of money over the years. We actually have um, about $760,000 right now in the fund. But we can only use 200,000 of it because there's a set limit that we have to reach as far as the reserves. I don't know what that limit is because I didn't do this actual presentation. I just am reading off someone else's slides, but I can get you any of that information if you need it. The important thing to know is uh, it's been determined by the city that $200,000 of that can be used next year um, for this fund. And so there's a group of us representing the different commissions and whatnot that. Um, they present these ideas to and then, you know, help us work, work through how we should spend these funds. And so for the 2022, and again, I can give you any, any of this information you want. The, the planned budget for the 200 grand is um, we want to invest in an employee mobility options fund, which includes parking subsidies, rideshare subsidies, bike share memberships, and scooter discounts that would go to employees and children of businesses. And they would have to apply for those in, in some manner. Um, there is customer and worker transit focused initiatives, which are free month of transit ride with some potential extensions of that for up to 700 worker or customers. If you sign up for the new code of fare management app, which allows you to pay with an online pay, that kind of thing. Um, parking validation program, which is a year of validation subsidy for the parking garages or on street. You may have experienced this if you go to one of the restaurants or stores, you can get your parking validated to cost you less money at the garages. Um, marketing campaign, which is digital and other radio TV print ad for education about transit and center programs and other parking, parking and mobility things. And then a resident transit incentive, free monthly transit rides with program reuse. Again, same thing with a sign up for up to 100 area residents. And then the short north um, alliance gets paid a chunk of money to administer all those things. Because somebody actually has to take the applications and approve them and all that. So that's what's uh, been proposed and it seems like general approved for next year. Um, if anybody has any questions about any of that stuff, I'll do my best answer now. Um, or I can refer you to someone who knows the actual data answers. When you said scooters, are you talking about bringing back all that stuff that we finally got off the sidewalk? No, all it is, all this is would be a subsidy, a partial subsidy through um, this fund to allow people who are employees of this to have membership, like basically whatever it was, I don't know which one it is, you know, like whether it's Lyft or whether it's Brewer or whatever, a certain number of those scooter rides will be paid for, paid for by this. So they wouldn't have to park in the show north if they live a several miles away and they wouldn't bring another car to the show north. So they could scooter in, but it wouldn't change any of the rules about how the scooters work. Yep, part of it still. They have to put it, they have to park where they Yeah, not, they can't park on the high streets. So it's still, they're still the high streets. That's a totally different discussion. And that doesn't have anything to do with our group, but that is administered by the same group in the city that runs this. But they, you know, they have their own set of rules. So good question. That being said, no, it doesn't change any of that. It just gives people a place they drive. But mostly, Right shape and scooters and transit. Oh, so the question does the C, the free C bicycle run? It does not. Uh, there's been a lot of interest in getting that back. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know Coda has some interest in doing that. As of yet, it is not back. What's the percentage of residential pieces? Um, there are, it's up to 100 area residents, free month of transit rides with rollover use, which I think means it can go into extra months somewhere else. If you sign up for the fair management. Yeah. That's yeah, COVID. Totally, yeah. And um, again, they will have all this stuff rolling out next year. And so there's going to be a bunch of press about it. <coughs> so you'll see flyers, hopefully there's a radio, whatever it is. And then, of course, the whole idea is to reduce the number of people physically driving. <coughs> to subsidize that process as we're hopefully transitioning from it. Where are we at? I think the 
um, using the quota system and kind of giving an incentive for people to use it could really help just like stigma or other people are on it. I think it's a good already existing thing or an existing thing that people can use, but sometimes it does like add up. So it's awesome that they're doing this really cool. Yeah, if anybody you know is interested in participating in any of this stuff, they're just on the opportunities to get involved in all these different committees and commissions because they're real short. That's all. Thanks for that. Yeah, pleasure. Anything else from IDS? Did you see? Been good for coming. I thought so, but then I couldn't tell. I thought it was different too. I'm sorry? What's that? Well, what was that? Any IDS updates uh, for the year? Um, no, I, I uh, was introduced or was asked to comment on the potential for art and graphic for the large parking garage that we approved um, for Jeffrey. Which, by the way, notice of foundation is coming up very, very quickly on that project. And uh, so I said I can't speak for the entire commission, one person. Uh, I, I know that you're not going to find a positive solution if, you know, if you're advertising alcohol or if beverages or anything right. over there. But why don't you focus on education, art education? So let's let's uh, do something to either connect CCADs different programs and some of the student work and what's happening on the side of the building that could interchange that they're talking about a combination of digital imagery in a limited area and then more large murals done the stretch fabric that will be taken over so it will be air can circulate in the parking garage to meet the requirements. I also told them that we're really concerned about light lead. We didn't really have a chance to look at that parking gap light solution. And for the two of you in the past, we've been very sensitive to garages uh, not having poles that allow the light. Uh, so we did the Hubbard one was one and the Sandy Wood or uh, Mark Woods one on Russell. Is that where the, the newest parking garage structure and we tried to keep the light level down and that type of thing. And so we were saying, how could Orange barrel do lighting for the artwork that would also add or supplement the lighting for parking security up on that top deck that you wouldn't want to be out there at 11 o'clock at night and not have enough lighting. There's a requirement, a specific, but it doesn't have to be a great big bowl of sodium vapor that leads out over the whole neighborhood. So they're, all, they're just collecting information and be coming back to us in the new year. For the finish of all of the graphic materials and everything. But I, they seemed receptive to the idea of making it educational, make it teach you something rather than just blast it. Do we do we know any of the artists that are on a lot of the murals uh, that go up? And how do we find well, out? I mean, I think it's in our blinds. I don't know if you mentioned we're here in the review, but we used to have a program for ridiculous, looked like a uh, wicked from. Uh, uh, from What's croquet? Um, and, and but it had medallions that changed every six months that told you about George Bellows, that told you about Alice Shelley, that told you about different artists in the community. And so as you walk the sidewalks, the difference is it was there permanent, you could actually read it. The ones that are on the ice flip so quickly that it's really hard to read any educational content on those. It's, it's more pictures. And notice they're sneaking in beer ads on uh, ice which we got, were told by Betsy King Gore that they were not going to do that. So that's going to come up later next year, I think. Okay, that's it. Things to look forward to. Josh, anything else? Sorry. More in favor? Holidays. Thanks a lot. Happy holidays and a great new year.